Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and you don't want me anywhere near your hair. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. <laughs> Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Javi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighbor News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. We are now on ATT and UVerse, which go to channel 99 if you're on the if you've got ATT cable and check the menu there. You can watch us. Um, you know, go to our website at ntnm.org to find out we are besides for all those hundreds of thousands of you watching us on YouTube, thank you. It's a slight exaggeration, but whatever. Um, it's actually three people that have watched us so far of the 487 shows we've got on air. Um, you know, <laughs> check out, we're actually on the air in a number of places, so go check us out. CommunityPolicingCaps24.org, and um, you got graffiti, you want, you've got pictures of graffiti. Um, you can go to the Caps24 site, you can report it at graffiti at caps24.org. It goes direct to the police. And I'd mentioned the new commander, but you know what? My next guest wants to talk about him also. And we're talking about somebody who's becoming more familiar to you, my favorite local reporter who does the best crime blotter I've ever read, and that's of the new star, Mark Shipper. How you doing? Good, sir. How are you? First of all, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, always good. So, you know what? Let's start off with the new commander, Thomas Waldera. Yeah, Commander Thomas Waldera. He was a uh, lieutenant. I believe he came over. Uh, he's been in the force quite a while. He uh, served as sergeant in a couple of districts, and uh, I met him briefly once several weeks back. And uh, as as you know, he's a uh, the second commander uh, in a month. He's been here longer now, but we had two commanders in the span of four weeks at 24. Well, actually, three if you want to tag the last day of the old one. <laughs> if you want to do that, yeah, you can do that, and then it's three, which yeah. there has to be some kind of record. Yeah, I think, uh, well, basically, you know what, I, I don't want to talk out of school, but I, I heard a lot of concerns about the situation. I know a lot of people were concerned about the situation that the, the middle commander, who didn't last long, was coming from one sort of district to a different sort of district. And also, I think the fact, you know, I, I've heard from people that he had small children, and this is a long way away from where he lived, and he did. He, I, I think it became a question of he wanted to be closer to home so he could put in more time with his family. That was but the I, scuttlebutt. That know, was the scuttlebutt. I, I don't know if it's 100 percent true, but that's what he, what he I was went heard. to uh, two, which is Wentworth, and uh, he came from 13th, which is Austin, which is the west side, and uh, those were the same rumors that I heard that you just spoke of. So. Um, I think there was also a a concern about a personality fit, a culture fit, because it's um, two very different districts and sort of two very different sets of problems. You could see where um, initially there was an idea that coming from the 13th and the Austin where there's some gang problems to the 24th where there's some gang problems on the far northeast side of the district, that maybe you had someone who had experience in that area, but his experience of the city uh, Terrence Williams, the one who's now at two, uh, was very different than Walter. Is Waldera. he the commander there? Yes, he's oh, the commander okay. at the second district, so he just went to a new district. And um, the new guy, Waldera, was um, in area north, I believe, when he came to 24. Yeah, yeah area, and area as a matter of fact, you know what, when I talked to him, he was totally, and, and it was like right when he was brand new. Yeah. I mean, you talked to him newer than me. Yeah, but he was totally familiar with the gangs in this area. Yeah, he he's been here for a long time, and he did his sergeant work in this area, and I think he did his patrol work in this area going going way back. And so he's got a couple degrees, and um, you know I I, th I think he'll be a good guy. But I don't know how you're going to replace Russell. I think you just got to move on from Russell because he was sort of a rare fit. Well, Russell was I've never you know what you're, you're right. He was a, not just a unique individual. Nobody ever said a bad word about him. He just blew everybody away. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And by the way, he even blew Mar blows Marty Levinson away. Yeah. And how Marty <laughs> Levinson knows him is Marty's at George's 
Oh, I forget the name of that. It's it's Kitty Corner from the Target. It's got a really weird name that uh, almost sounds gay. Over on Broadway? No, no, no. This is on Tui and not Tui and and Malvina, something like that. Okay, I don't know. Oh, George's, George's Wildwood Barber Shop. Oh, okay. But okay. Wildwood is actually the name of the neighborhood. So George happens to be Commander Roussel's barber. Oh, really? He gets so, his hair barbered, huh? So he gets his hair. Well, as a matter of fact, I did you know not what? know that. He told me he's the being, a, being an ex-Marine. He was a Marine, and reserve two officer. Tours yep. of Fallujah. He, by the way, did you know he ran drones? I did not know he ran drones. I, I wish I had him. By the way, I, 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 I have been in communication with he's him. He's an onion. He Every time you hear something about Roussel, there's another layer to peel back. He's he, just he had a ton of experience. Unbelievable guy. Yeah, but he basically, when he, moved in, when he moved into that neighborhood, he wanted to find a barber who knew how to give a razor cut because he's got a marine type oh, haircut. Oh, yeah, he absolutely does. That flat top. And he asked, the, he asked George, um, can you do a razor cut? Can yeah. you do a razor top? He said, sure. Right. And that's who does his Found hair. his man. Found his man. But even Marty speaks to know of him. Seriously. Oh, he, he was an amazing guy. For, for a reporter, uh, commanders can be um, um, uh, hard to reach, <laughs> shall we say. and um, Very um, private in their thoughts and comments. Absolutely. And, and when they're not private, they're very much on message, you know, almost like they're reading a, a press release of some kind to you. Yeah. Uh, Roussel, when he would speak to me, he was the only commander I've ever had to stop talking because I had too much. You know, I had a page worth of notes and there's no way I could fit it all in an article. And we get done with that and he'd start recommending books to read to give me an idea of what his mindset was. And then he'd want to talk about the books. He did that with me too. So, I mean, uh, he was um, a very interesting guy and, uh, you know, he was a... He was Still a, is. By the way, the one thing, in. if you happen to be watching Commander, and I think I'll email you to show you, I really wanted to talk to you about that Nazi march with uh, Frank Collins in, in the late 70s at the Federal Building. He was there as a policeman, and I was there as a reporter, and I spent three days, day and night, with Mayor Kahana's people before the march, who was the Jewish Defense League. Okay. And that was a very interesting time, and we did trade some information, which I won't say on the air because I don't want anybody living to be indicted. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, they'll appreciate that. So anyway, let's, let's um, you know, uh, we're almost halfway through, so let's move on to uh, other, what else would you like? Time what? flies. Time flies on this show. Yeah. No, time definitely flies. And um, uh, so let's talk, the new star, basically you cover the area from the Chicago River up to Howard? Yeah, yeah, not inside publications, the, the broad publishing head does. Uh, new star is our sort of far north side area and along the lakefront. Inside booster is our second paper. That's sort of the central part of the north side. Uh, all of this stuff goes west to the river. And we picked up the first of the year uh, skyline. And uh, you may have heard of Ann Gerber, a longtime colonist, columnist, uh, another reporter named Felicia Dechter, who's been uh, in newspapers for a long time. Oh, and by the way, uh, also in her spare time, um, she is she's working on Bernie Stone's autobiography. Yes, she is. The one the one and the same. And uh, we picked up Skyline and, and those two came with and um, that covers uh, the downtown area almost exclusively the um, the loop um, river north, I guess. Um, and basically the core of downtown, like North Avenue, south all the way to the river in that core area. Yeah. So. Ann Gerber was the star of the Old Learner paper. She was the single most popular columnist. She had the gossip column. And as a matter of fact, I remember the first time she when still I started has the it. show. That's and what she does for us now. And still wanted, and wanted to get the editor-in-chief on. He says to me, you're the only person who ever asked for an interview and didn't ask for Ann Gerber. Really? And this is like 20 years ago. She called uh, my girlfriend's father, I believe, a hairy animal and told him to get off the page of a magazine that she was reading uh, back in the 70s. I happen to like your girlfriend's father. <laughs> Do you know him? Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. I knew Sean T it's Sean Tanner. Yeah, yeah. I'm that, sorry. That, I, you, you might know him. He, he's run a couple bars in the city. Uh, well, actually, probably not because I don't know how often I was... I'm not a bar person in particular. No, he's a music guy too. I don't know. Maybe maybe you do or don't. But, but he's you know somehow what? It's got funny. him. It's like today. Today is like he have, he have the nine Jewish guys with the Jewish girlfriends. So I got him mixed yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. This is a different. Because I had three of them today. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, three of the six. That, that's got to be a record for you too, right? Definitely a record for me. <laughs> so anyway, no, I'm sorry about that because John was the last guest and he's the other. Yeah, right, yeah, he's yeah no. on the show. I remember the conversation. I get confused. I need a beer. I just haven't had one all day. <laughs> 
So he, he, he ended up on the cover of a magazine, and this was in the 70s, and he, was, uh, he had a, what they called a natural at that time, a big afro, and he had a big beard. And uh, they put him in, like, some boots or something, and they put him on the cover of this thing, and it was, like, some hippie power thing. And Ann Gerber caught sight of this, and uh, she wrote in her column, she's like, I don't know who this hairy animal is, but I want him off whatever magazine this was. Wow. So this is, like, uh, it's only two degrees of separation, but, you know, I met my girlfriend just a few years ago, so this was 30 almost 40 years back. Well, she was considered a very fancy society type. That well, now I work with really her. Now wealthy. she's my colleague, which okay. is bizarre. It's bizarre. You know, I only saw her once on TV. I saw her once. I admit I was shocked when I saw her on TV about 25 years ago that she wasn't 90 years old then and actually was pretty good looking. Was she? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. I mean, now I would think, based on the pictures I used to see in Lerner, I would figure she'd be about 150 now. Yeah. Well, she's <laughs> she's a lovely 150 if she is. She's a, she's a people like her column. Yeah. No, people definitely. It's funny because that was the only part of Lerner I never used to read. The column? I never was into gossip, ever. I never read right. Cup's column. I didn't read, uh, you know, the different columns. I never read gossip columns. I just didn't like them. We're on camera here, so I'll say it's a wonderful addition to our newspaper. And it's a wonderful addition Go to your ahead. newspaper. We're happy and, to uh, have her. By the way, it is because <laughs> the truth is it's going to bring a lot of readers and a lot of popularity and advertisers. Absolutely. No question about it. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you some stories about gossip columns off the air. All right. Because I don't want to act. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll do it off the air. Off the air. Sorry, viewers. Um, we, so we, three and a half minutes. What would you like to talk about? Well, what are we? What were we talking about? We were talking about Capone earlier. Oh, Al, Al Capone. Al Capone. Matter of fact, in our next segment with Sean Tanner, we'll, you'll hear a little more Al Capone. Oh, this is gonna be out of order, but uh, yeah, uh, Al Capone. Uh, his his grandniece Deirdre Capone wrote a uh, biography called Uncle Al. Um, a few months back, it's an interesting book. Anybody who has any interest in this kind of stuff should read it. Um, it's not necessarily factually accurate, but it's uh, compelling. And it's written by someone inside the Capone family, which is exceptionally rare. These people were not talkative people. Understatement. And because and even if, if they were talkative, they didn't get to live very long. That's absolutely right. <laughs> so so uh, they, they kept it close to the vest, as they say. And uh, But anyway, she tells the story that Al Capone uh, intended to buy the Cubs at one point, And uh, he wanted to integrate baseball in the 1920s. And uh, Al Capone was apparently very progressive. He had many clubs. He had jazz musicians. He was comfortable with uh, other races. As an Italian, he felt discriminated against. And so he identified with the underdog. He wanted to buy the Cubs. And um, Kinasa Mountain Landis, the famous commissioner, was oh, yeah. commissioner at the time. And uh, obviously Al Capone could not buy a professional baseball franchise because he's Al Capone. You know, the money came from bootlegging, etc. And Judge, he was actually a federal judge before he became a police commissioner. And he was brought in specifically to take care of the 1919 White the, Sox. The uh, Black Sox Black scandal. Sox scandal Ab yeah. Absolutely. So, so Capone said, here's how I'm going to buy this team. I have so much dope on the politicians in this town and the politicians from D.C. I have info on these guys. I'm going to blackmail them with it. You know, mm. I've got so much stuff. If they tell me I can't buy a franchise, I'm going to show the United States the underbelly of this country, which is the people who are holding up the morality are making me rich. And so I'm going to get the Cubs. I'm going to integrate them. And uh, Deirdre does not say why the plan didn't work out. Oh, he's going to hire Babe Ruth to manage them also. So you're going to have an integrated Cubs team with Babe Ruth as manager <laughs> and Al Capone as owner. But for some reason, it didn't work out. But Actually, I would have loved to have had him go belly up on those people. I mean, you know, uh, reveal all this stuff. It would have made for an interesting country. It would have been better. Definitely better. No, he was... Uh, and by the way, the Guinness Book of World Records, when it, which I used to be into when I, when I was in school, it actually listed two things about him. It said the most money ever made in a year that could be recorded by anybody was El Capone, like something in 1927 or 1929, made something like 127 or 129 million 127 or 129 million dollars in that day and also talked about how he killed almost 200 people in that same year <laughs> <laughs> wow we're talking about all kinds of records and it's got to be another record money made and people killed yeah although i in think one I, year although frankly i think some politicians people don't realize some of these politicians they actually could be responsible for more deaths than that just from their negligence, stupidity, among other things. But that's another story for another day. Yeah, At this heavy. point, we're running out of time. So if people would like to contact you, give you the scoop of a lifetime, 
um, you know, all the rest of it, who do they, where do they reach you? Get, get at us at our uh, Facebook page. We publish all our news there at uh, Inside Booster and News Star and Skyline is the new edition. And uh, that's the, probably the best place to uh, get at us. And if you uh, meet me on the streets, I'll give you a business card. And Mark Shipper writes, also the best police blotter in, that I've ever read. So check that out also. I want to thank you very much, Mark. And yes, it's sir. time for segment two.